Good morning, Utsav. Trust we are all doing well by the grace of God. This pandemic has created havoc in our lives on different fronts, be it spiritual, physical, emotional, financial. In this scenario, it's very important for us to pay attention to our needs because for many of us, it's actually a matter of survival. These are challenging times. People are desperate. They need love, help, support, someone to care for them. They need encouragement. There is hopelessness everywhere. But on the other hand, I notice people are more vulnerable and are willing to take whatever help may come their way. As Christ's followers, we can bring hope to them. I believe that this is a great opportunity to reach out with God's unconditional love to our oikos, our family, our neighbors and our colleagues. And this morning, my main text is from the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm going to read it for you starting at verse 13. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is calling us, his disciples, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. This is a command that Jesus is giving us. And as Jesus is true disciples, he expects us to obey his command, not giving us much of an option. The second thing that we see here Jesus talks about the salt and light having an ability to influence and bring transformation. As Jesus expects us to be an influence and an agent of transformation, both light and salt have an ability to influence and transform. The few properties that we can see of salt and light are salt preserves, it purifies, it gives energy, it adds flavor, it heals. Light illuminates, provides vision, it expels darkness, gives direction, protects us from danger. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The word of God is indeed a light to our path. And the more we seek after the truth of his word, the more the Lord opens up our understanding. The third thing that we see here is this, that God wants us to live for his purpose. Beloved, we can be consumed with our own needs and we can be oblivious to the needs that are around us. My life can become all about I, me, and myself, which can very often lead me away from what God's purpose is for my life. How do I live God's purpose? By loving people unconditionally, like the way Jesus has loved us. The fourth thing that we see here is we are created to do good works. In a Paul in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, he says that we've been saved by grace through faith, not by our works. Salvation is a gift. Beloved, none of us, none of us can earn salvation. But salvation is a gift from God. So nothing that we do or none of our works can earn us our salvation. But on the other hand, 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. We are created to do good works. And while we are here, God has kept us here with a purpose that we do the good works that he has called us to do. The fifth thing that we see here, and that is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. I'm going to read it for you. It says, Then let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. When we do our good works, our Father in heaven is glorified. When we reach out to people in need selflessly in this time of crisis, people will taste of God's love and they will see the difference in us compared to others. Beloved, it's not about how much. Maybe you're feeling right now that there's not much that you can do. It's all right. But it's about whatever you have. It's not about how much, but it's about whatever you have. And when we reach out to these people around us with the unconditional love, that God has put inside of us. And here are people beginning to think, who are these people? Why are they helping us? How come they're not concerned about their own needs and they're reaching out to our needs? And that's when we have a beautiful opportunity of sharing God's news, the good news of the gospel to them. The sixth thing that we see here is that we need to be careful to preserve the saltiness. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says that if salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. That means salt can lose its flavor. We are to guard our saltiness by not allowing ourselves to be contaminated. Beloved, so much of this world can come in us that it can contaminate us and that it can move us away from what God's purpose is for our lives. There's much that we can learn from the life of Daniel. Daniel, who was during the time and the rule and reign of Babylon. And we read in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it says Daniel had purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's delicacies. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17, it says that Daniel had been given a great ability to interpret dreams and visions. And so during those times when the king had dreams and visions and nobody was able to interpret them, the God-given talent that Daniel had, he used it and he interpreted the dreams and the visions for the king. Once again, we read that Daniel had 10 times better knowledge, skill, wisdom, and understanding. We also see that as God began to lift up Daniel in the Babylonian empire, Daniel had the best of food available. He had access to every good thing of the Babylonian empire, yet he guarded himself. Scripture says that he had a lifestyle of fasting. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 says that Daniel, in the midst of everything, he always acknowledged his need for God. And he had a lifestyle of prayer. Daniel prayed three times a day and it says it was his custom. Daniel had a custom and a lifestyle of praying three times a day. In spite of all the things that God did in Daniel's life, in spite of all that God lifted him up, Daniel always was humbled and acknowledged it was always God who lifted him up. In the midst of all his success, he didn't allow pride to take over, but he was always humbled before God. And Daniel never ever compromised. Beloved, in conclusion, 
I just want to tell you this morning that right now we have the greatest window of opportunity to share the love of God with others. Let's reach out with God's unconditional love to the people that are around us. When we see a need, let's meet it. When we see a hurt, let's heal it. And at the end, I want to say this, that the life of Daniel was such an impact on the king of Babylon that this is the decree that King Darius made. King Darius, the king of the greatest empire that was the Babylonian empire, this is what he says in his decree in Daniel chapter 6, verse 25 and verse 27. And then the king Darius wrote, To all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Beloved, we see the impact that Daniel's life had on the king of Babylon. And I want to tell you this morning, even as it says in Matthew chapter 5, that we are called to be the salt of the earth. We are called to be the light of the world. Let us understand the purpose for which God has kept us here, to be an influence, to be an agent of transformation wherever God has kept us. Let's reach out to all the people that are around us with the love of God that God has filled us with, with that unconditional love. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you this morning for the meditation of your word. We thank you, Lord, that even as you have kept us here, you have given us this huge responsibility, Lord, and a command to be the light of the world and to be the salt of the earth. And Father, I pray that in all that is going around us and in the midst of all this pandemic, Lord, in the midst of all these challenges and struggles, that you will give us grace not to only look at our needs, but to be mindful of the needs that are around us, Lord. And God, I just pray that with the love that you have filled us, may we reach out with that same unconditional and selfless love to those people who are hurting around us, Lord Jesus. Give us grace, Lord, to reach out to all those needs that are around us, Lord Jesus. Sir. Father, we pray that you will use us, Lord, Use us as a community to reach out, Lord, and to fulfill, Lord, the purpose for which that you have kept us here, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We pray that in the days that lie ahead, Lord, that we will see the needs that are around and we will extend that helping hand, Lord, and love others around us, Lord Jesus. So that through all these good works, Lord, that your name alone will be glorified, Lord. This morning, we just thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you.